So most of us have probably heard of the Vikings before, um, you know, ancient warriors who sailed the seas, and they had these really cool looking shields. I believe that this is, um, from some reference images I looked at, that this is kind of what their shields, some of them may have looked like. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a quick and dirty Viking shield in Blender. We're gonna be using some um, images, free images that we're gonna find online. And by all means, this is not the fanciest um, texturing or modeling, because we're just um, using a quick and dirty technique to make this model, and it's just something fun to do. So by all means, um, take it for what it is. I'm gonna quickly show you um, some of the things you can download before we get started with this fun little um, Viking shield tutorial. So what you can do, is you can go into Google or any web browser and just type in seamless grunge metal texture and just get one that you like, whatever, just download it and put it on your desktop, okay? On your computer, get whichever one you want, but the main image you're gonna want is this one here, which is free to download on Pexels. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description below, so you can go ahead and download it over here. You can get a high resolution one, so it's pretty cool. For free, download it to your desktop, and I've already gone ahead and um, done that. So you can see over here, I've got these two images. So um, let's get into this tutorial, and I really hope that you guys enjoy it and find it educational. So I've gone ahead and opened up a new scene in Blender. I'm gonna hit A to select everything, and I'm gonna hit X and delete. Um, then I'm gonna go Shift A, and we're gonna go over to our mesh options, and we're gonna go down and add in a circle. You don't have to change anything here on the settings, just leave it as it is. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our front view here like this. And we're gonna, with this circle selected, we're gonna tab into edit mode, so hitting the tab key. We're now inside of edit mode and with all of this geometry active, we're gonna hit R to rotate, then X on our keyboard. And then if you type in nine zero, it'll rotate it 90 degrees on the X. Go ahead and hit enter. So we've now rotated it 90 degrees on the X axis and it'll bring up a little box here and you could move that around if you want, but just, you know, keep it at 90. That's fine, super simple. And now what we're gonna do is a little um, technique I'm gonna show you here. If you actually go E to extrude and S to scale, you can scale it in just like that a little bit. And then what you can do is you can let go and you can go Shift Alt and then click on an edge here and it'll loop select all of these verts on the outside. And then you're just gonna go E, Y, so you're gonna extrude it on the Y axis about that much. Okay, so that's gonna be the rim. And then to give that some thickness, you can go here and just add a solidify modifier. But one little quick trick is just to hit A to select everything, and then to hit E to extrude, and then Alt S, or, so, or you can right click to let go. So this is repeat that. Okay, I'll start from the beginning. With everything selected, you can hit E to extrude, right click to let go, and then you can go Alt S, and just move your mouse, and you can see here we're bringing it out along the normals, giving it some thickness, like that. So you can make it as thick as you want. Uh, don't go too, too thick, okay? Make it look a little bit too heavy, not like a shield or anything like that. So with that done, um, we're just gonna simply deselect everything, and then we're gonna go Shift-Alt again, and just click on an edge here on the inside, and it'll loop select those verts, and you can go Shift-D to duplicate, S to scale it a little bit, and you just hit F to fill it. Now this is gonna be our planks of wood, and at the moment we're not gonna add any more geometry because it's just temporary. And with that still active, we can hit P on our keyboard and we're gonna go separate by selection. So now if we go back into object mode, we've got two objects now, this is its own object. So what we're gonna quickly do, it's super simple, we need some reference before we can model the planks. So with this circle here selected, we're just gonna go over to our materials tab, click on new, and let's just call it planks, okay? And let's go over to the base color here. Click on the little tab, and we're gonna add in a simple image texture. Click on open here, and let's go to the desktop or wherever. In my case, like I said, I put that um, free image, the Pexels Eric McLean image over here. I put it on my desktop, so I'm just gonna click on it and go open image. And if I hit Z and I go material preview, I'm gonna see pretty much nothing because I actually have to go into UV editing here and just adjust a few things. So let's go into the UV editing workspace and make sure you are in edit mode still with that selected. Hit A to select all of the geometry for this disc here. So with the disc selected, go into edit mode, make sure all of the geometry is active. Go into your front of graphic view by hitting one on your number pad and then go U and go project from view. 
We're then gonna come over here and we're just gonna go G to move it, select all of it and then S to scale it. And we're just gonna place it on top of this shield here like that. And over here now, if we hit Z and we go material preview, you can see that is what we're seeing. Pretty cool, isn't it? So let's now quickly, um, oh yeah, maybe before we go further, just go make sure to select all of that again. Make sure your material preview over here, let's just select it all, then hit R to rotate it and just rotate it till these planks here are nice and level as well. Okay, that's kind of important. You can see these lines here like that. So when that's fixed, we can go into our layout again over here. Just make sure you're still in material preview by hitting Z and just clicking on this bottom option. And now we can simply go shift A, add in a plane, R, X, 9, 0, hit enter and an S to scale it down. And then we're gonna go G, Y and move it forward just a tiny bit, okay? And now we can go G, Z and just move it up, S to scale it. And we're just trying to make it the same height as one of these planks here like that. And once it's roughly the same um, height, we're gonna go tab into edit mode, S, X and scale it along the X like that. Don't worry about it sticking out. We're gonna deal with that in just a second. And then we can now select all of this and go Shift D, Z and move it up and make the next plank. So just kind of look where those gaps are and go Shift D, Z and bring it up. We're just trying to leave a little bit of a gap in between there to make it look like planks. And with that active, we can go Shift D, Z, bring another one down and just place it over here. And you can always select these bottom verts, go G, Z, just bring them down more if it's not exactly 100%. Then just select the whole thing again and then go Shift D, Z and bring it down. And then Shift D, Z and bring one more down like that. So once that's done, um, we can select all of this and we can go E to extrude. Whoops. Uh, make sure it's all active. If you're getting funny stuff going on like that, just hit Alt N and just recalculate the outside. And now if you go E to extrude, it should all extrude out like that. So we're just gonna give it some thickness. So that's the thickness of our planks. And then what we need to do is tab out of edit mode. And now we can select that original disc, the reference disc that's in here. So just select that. It's this one over here. It should be called circle.001 if you're following along. So just make sure that's active. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode. And with all of this selected, we're gonna go G, Y and move it forward and then E to extrude, we're gonna extrude it along the Y back like that. And that's gonna be a cutter object. So let's tab out of edit mode. Let's select the planks here. Let's go to modifiers, add modifier, and let's give it a Boolean. Click on the eyedropper and then select that cylinder there to cut it. And then we're gonna come here and make it um, intersect. So now it's just gonna be cutting it. So if we go to wireframe, you can see that. So when it looks like that, you can just come here Cut it a drop down and apply. So now we can select a cutter object, hit X and delete. And now if the planks here, let's just select the planks. Let's go to our modifiers and give them a bevel modifier, just to give them a nice bevel. And you can mess around with that bevel size all you want, but I'm just gonna leave it as is and increase the segment count and go to object and enable shade smooth as well. Now we can go to our materials tab, come to the drop down and just give it that planks material Go back to the UV editing and then in your edit, editing workspace with those planks selected, make sure you're in edit mode. Select everything and then go U and then project from view. And then over here, select all of these pieces and then S to scale them up, G to move them and we're just lining them up once again with the shield. Tab out of edit mode and go into material preview. And now we can see those planks are perfectly lined up and we have those nice little gaps in there like that, which is all done now. So now we can get in to uh, some of the other things here. So let's select the outside metal part. And let's quickly go to our materials, click new, come to the base color here, and we're gonna select our second image texture. So go to um, image texture, click on open, and I'm just gonna go to my desktop and I'm just gonna get a grunge seamless texture here. I'm gonna go open image, and we'll get with the, to the materials with that in a little bit later, but for now, just come over here on the bottom and make the flat box because we want box projection. But um, we're gonna work on that a little bit later, but we kind of have that in place now. In fact, let's just click on this material here and call it metal, like so. So now we're just gonna, before we get any further, just quickly also go to our modifiers, 
give it a um, bevel modifier and then bring the amount here down quite a bit just to create a bevel on the edges here and then increase the segment count to three and then give it a subdivision surface modifier bump it up in the viewport and then go to object and enable shade smooth just to make that look a little bit nicer and now we can go back to our layout and over here just hit Z go back into material preview we can now make these metal struts here if you want so go shift a simply just add in a plane hit R X 9 0 enter and an S to scale it down to a little cube G to move it over and just scale it till it's the same thickness and then you can just tab into edit mode and um, just select these verts and move them up and you might have to go in um, move it just for just a little bit like that so all we're doing is just selecting these and just moving them like that so nothing too complicated and then just select the whole thing and in your front view just go shift D and move it to where this one is and just rotate it a bit to make it line up don't worry about it being too perfect and then select all of this and then hit E to extrude and just give it a little bit of thickness going forward just so we have these um, braces here then we can hit A to select everything and then we're gonna go shift D Y and just move them back just to make these plates at the back like that and if these ones we can go S Z and scale them higher like that and if any points are sticking out here, just select them and G, Z, bring them down. Same with these ones here. Just tuck them in and that should be fine. Just like that. And with this one, it's okay. So now tab out of edit mode. And if these new struts selected, come to the drop down and just give them under the materials, that metal material as well. And um, that should all be okay. So we can also make this little metal thing in the middle. So we can go, just in fact, select the outer hub, tab into edit mode, just shift alt, click on the edge here to loop selected, shift D to duplicate, S to scale, bring it down to about here and let's quickly um, move it back a bit. And let's go E to extrude, S to scale, and then E to extrude and Y just a little bit S to scale and then hit F to fill it. Just make this little decoration. Then shift alt click on this edge here and then go E, Y and extrude it through and then hit F to fill it. Just like that, just a little decoration detail. Then go over and let's um, just select the vertex on here actually and then hit control L and I'll select this whole thing by itself and then hit P and separate by selection. Tab out of edit mode and now this is its own object. So we're just gonna come here to its material, come to the drop down and change that to planks. Now we can go to UV editing, go into our front view with that selected, hit A to select all of the geometry and then go U and project from view. Now in this window here, we're gonna select everything, G to move it, S to scale, and we can look in our live preview on the side and we're just matching it up. As you can see here, it doesn't have to be perfect, but that already looks quite cool. So now let's go and work on our materials, but let's go actually to our shading workspace. And before we work on materials, we probably want to go to our render settings and just change this um, to ambient occlusion, make sure to tick it and screen space reflections. And if you're feeling really brave, you can enable bloom as well to get a little bit of bloom, but it's optional. We can now go shift A, add in an area light, G to move it over to the side. And now if we hit Z, and instead of being a material preview, we can change it to a rendered. We can see this. Now if that light active, we're gonna rotate it in by hitting R. We're gonna to come to our light settings and increase the power to 120. And we're gonna increase the size as well, just to about two and a half meters. Go to the top and then G to move it forward and then R to rotate it in. Then you can go Shift D and duplicate this light like this. Now I'm not gonna to go too much into the lighting. It's very optional and up to you, but just something like that is fine. And now we can just select the outer rim, that metal object and come to the metal material here and simply just make it metallic. And then we're gonna go Shift A over here, search and we're gonna get a texture coordinate. So just type in texture 
coordinate and get a texture coordinate. You can also use the node rank or add-on to do this quickly, but I'm not going to go through that. So just grab the object here and plug it in to the vector of the image texture here, right? And make sure that instead of um, flat here, that it just says box. Okay, we want it to be box rejected. And now you can see we have that. And um, if you select these rods here, these um, metal objects, you can select them and hit Control A or Command A and apply the scale and they should match up as well. And now you can mess around with the roughness here, uh, make things more metallic. You could add in a bump. And in fact, I'll quickly show you what I did with my earlier model, just so you guys see. Um, if you just, um, if I go into rendered view here, you can see what I did is I just simply took a bump map and I added it into the scene here, set it to a really low strength, and then I plugged that image into the height here, and then I plug that normal into the normal here, and mess around with some of these sliders. It really doesn't have to be too specific. And with the wooden planks here, um, I also added a bump to it, and I messed around with the roughness here. Um, very basic stuff, as you can see here, nothing complicated at all. Um, but on the end of the day, just keep in mind though that um, this isn't really high quality texturing here. We're just reusing an image. So this is no not an official bump map or normal map or anything like that. But this is really just about how to make um, really quick and dirty objects like this if you needed them in a scene and you just wanted to like pretty much turn a picture into a quick model. And that's kind of what this specific technique is here. This is not a high end tutorial. Um, I might cover some of that stuff a little bit in the future, but this was just a little quick and simple tutorial for people who kind of knew to Blender but would like to make something like a Viking shield. So I'm just gonna go back to our original scene here, which is pretty much the same thing. Um, so you can go to your world background here and just make it black. Oops, make it black. And what I like to do is go to my render settings here, go to film and enable transparent. Now we don't see anything. And you can just select your lights at this point and duplicate them, rotate them and move them around and then look at your shield from different angles. You can come over here to the render settings and mess around with the bloom and the threshold and just make it look really cool. Just have fun with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on making a Viking kind of Norse shield thing in Blender. Oh yeah, by the way, one more thing. I also just super simple, just selected um, one of these um, rods or strips duplicated it, brought it over here, and just extruded some bits on it, really low poly, you know, just extruded out the faces, and gave it a subdivision surface modifier just to make a simple little handle and just gave it the metal material. So nothing complicated there. I hope you guys enjoyed this um, Blender tutorial. I hope it was educational, and I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial. Oh yeah, and um, I will be making these available on my Patreon.